Hi folks, well LR Workshop, but then you knew that already. This is the, uh, after I got a thousand subs, I said I'd do a Q&A video and this is that video. Although actually since then I've gone up an extra hundred subscribers. So yeah, I cannot keep up with the rate these subscribers are coming. So that's great. And then hang on for the end, I'm gonna do some bonus footage of me walking around my garage. You can see what my setup is and all the junk I've got. In this video, I've gone for a selfie stick because uh, just for a little bit, something a little bit different and it's gonna be a dynamic video. I hope the footage isn't too juddery. I know some of you don't like how uh, juddery my phone is. By now you've probably all seen my monster video I put up a couple of days ago and that's just incredible for the comments I've received on that and the reception has been absolutely brilliant. And uh, it's been 10 years in the making in my head, that, f that uh, video, and I'm glad I've got it out there. And um, I cannot say that all of my videos are going to be that of that level of quality because that took well i started editing it in uh, february and it's probably taken about 100 hours of work to put that together so um, but i have uh, started writing the follow-up video so that one based on a few comments there's a few things uh, i want to carry on talking about um so stay tuned for that one but it'll be several months yet in the meantime i'm going to carry on with my normal kind of videos just trying to plow out some uh, just stuff I get up to. Right, so let's get on to the A's, to the Q's. First question up from Michael, he says, what tools do I carry in my Defender? Uh, actually, I think that's quite an interesting topic. So I'm gonna do a separate video about that coming out in a couple of days. So stay tuned for that. Um, oh, I can go through that in a bit more depth. I do carry some stuff. And to be honest, I've hardly ever used any of them. So we'll see, uh, it'd be interesting to, for, for you guys to compare with what you carry in your vehicles and see what uh, what dead weight I'm carrying around. <laughs> Another question also from Michael, got it uh, written down on the laptop here. What would I do for a pre-trip inspection for a 1500 mile journey over a week? If your Defender's used regularly or semi-regularly, uh, 1500 miles shouldn't be too much of an issue for it. What I would do is check all of the oil levels, top up all of the oil levels, top up the coolant if it needs to be. If you're feeling adventurous, I might jack up every wheel and um, check for play in the wheel bearings and I would make sure the tire pressures were all correct. But that's probably all you need to do. The equivalent journey in the UK, I think would be probably, you know, a camping trip to Scotland from the south of England. You usually do 1500 miles and a defender should be able to handle that. Um, or an older vehicle should be able to handle that if it's been used regularly. If it does like 100 miles a year, then you may want to get in a bit further and, and give it a service. But if you service things regularly, you should be able to just drive 1500 miles. No problem, shouldn't be an issue. Um, that's if it's like tarmac road in a Western country. If you're going off road, you probably want to check suspension, uh, stuff like that. But as I say, if the vehicle's driving in the same environment that it's usually driving in, that I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much uh, about it. I know Land Rover's uh, got bad reputation with reliability. I know, I know, crazy, right? But uh, they're not that. I don't think they're that unreliable, to be honest. I think you'd be fine on a fifteen hundred mile journey. And then we've got Lee. He says, in a past video, you mentioned doing videos on AC. Tell me more, please. It's true. I do do want to do. I do do want. I do want to do a video on uh, fitting an AC system into a Defender that doesn't have it. And you may be looking over my shoulder at the moment. Um, so I'm just going to turn the camera around and I'll, I'll show you, I'll get some of the bits out and I'll show you the bits I've got and talk a bit more about it. Actually change of plan. I've just filmed this video and I realized it's uh, incredibly long. So I've put it into a separate video actually, um, which will be coming out soon. And the link's on the screen if I've already posted it. Henry says, what editing tools do you use? Um, I use a free editing, uh, free editing software called DaVinci Resolve version 15, runs on Windows 10. I film everything on, uh, all my latest footage is all filmed on this, which is uh, my phone, it's a Nokia 6. It's good enough, I think, for the moment. I am thinking about getting a better camera. I'm not sure at the moment yet whether if I spent 500 quid on a camera, that would be better for the channel versus spending 500 quid on like parts to compare or just something, something work on my vehicle that may produce content that's more interesting. I'm not kind of certain yet. What I'm going to do is buy a new microphone 
for voiceover work. So hopefully that will improve the quality of things there. Uh, my editing suite is essentially a six-year-old computer that sat in my kitchen. This is where I edit all my videos. And this is where my son throws his breakfast everywhere. And this on the laptop is where I run LR Workshop from that laptop in my kitchen. Yeah, so it's not a crazy editing rig. It just, the most important thing is just doing it, just getting on and doing it and finding the time and having the motivation to produce videos is, I would say, an, an experiment as well. That's probably the more important thing. But there you go, that's what I use for editing my videos. Uh, Mike in Canada. Hi, my name's Mike, I'm from Canada. He says, should it be compulsory for potential Land Rover owners to have a psychiatric test before buying? It reminds me of that sign. You don't have to be crazy to work here, but it helps. Possibly that might be with every classic car. I'm gonna change the hands here, because, oh God, holding the camera up. I think you've, you've got to be particularly wedded to the brand. Land Rovers are pretty rubbish vehicles by many people's accounts, but they're intoxicating and the internet is full of people that spend money when they don't think they should be spending money. I've spent about twice the cost of my vehicle again on it. And that's parts basically and fixing it and doing it up. That doesn't include fuel, that doesn't include insurance, that doesn't include tax. But then what else would I spend my money on? I'd you're always going to spend your money on a hobby if it happens to be a vehicle then um uh so be it um i think land rovers are the most modern classic car that was available on the market as in what i mean by that is old technology it's technology from however we want to compare it from the 80s from the 50s whatever but it's old technology you know modern cars don't really rust land rovers still you know it's a constant chase a battle you know i remember cars 25 years ago, you know, rust was a real problem. Rust would kill cars and it doesn't happen anymore, but Land Rover, it still happens. So there's part of, there's that part of it where you've got to be particularly um, stubborn to want to drive a Land Rover. I don't think you need a psychological exam, a, a psychiatric exam. I don't think you need to be that crazy because I think there's a lot of crazy people out there. It's just that we've all chosen to spend our time on Defenders. Um, I, think every, I think everyone's a bit crazy. Everyone's got their, their vice, whatever that may be. Um, so no, I think it's utterly healthy and there's no problem whatsoever that you spend most of your savings and most of your hard-earned cash and, have, and never see your family because you're always lying under your vehicle, getting covered in oil and dirt just to keep it running. And then we've got Stephen, he says, how hard is it to get 200 or 300 TDI blocks and heads and how soon will it be almost impossible? I don't worry, so I've got a 300 TDI and I don't worry about spares particularly there are so many there are so many fleets of 300 tdis around the world that land rover itself is su still supplying genuine parts because it's good business they're making a lot of there are a lot of genuine parts available you will see a lot of um so this is more just generally about 300 td part 300 tdi parts uh, th there were a lot of 300 TDI genuine parts that are labeled 2014. So even in 2014, they were making, getting commissioned and having made genuine 300 TDI parts to stock up, presumably. Um, 200 TDIs, I cannot say so much. Probably not because 300 TDIs were built for 12 years and fitted to vendors. 200 TDIs only four years. So the 200 TDI... I mean, Defender, if you want to buy a genuine, because Defender and Discovery 200 TDIs are different engines. They're mostly the same, but they've got different ancillaries on them. Finding a Defender engine is expensive. You would pay 800 to 1,000 pounds for a, for a Defender engine in the UK. Discovery engines are more common, and they're the ones that are mostly fitted to series vehicles as, as retro upgrades. Um, 300 TDIs, though, are you see people selling them on eBay and they've got just pallets and they're like, hey, I'll just have one of the, you know, one of the, when you buy this, you'll get in one of these 300 TDIs because all the discoveries are pretty much toast now. They've rotted away. They, um, there's 300 TDIs everywhere. I'm not even worried even if that su supply dries up because there are businesses like Turner's who make or recondition engine blocks and heads um, and they do that for series vehicles. So, and they're, they're 30, 40 years old. So, there's going to be a long time to come. There's going to be services available to find good quality 300 TDIs. 200 TDIs you'll probably pay a premium for, but 300 TDIs I don't really see there's going to be 
um, much of an issue with that. So I think for a, probably a good couple of decades, I think we're, we're, there's, there's going to be plenty of them around. Uh, you may have to bore out cylinder blocks to go over uh, oversize. You can get 10,000 and 20,000 oversize pistons. So off the shelf, you can buy parts off the shelf that will allow you to recondition a, a block. I think, I think people will be doing electric conversions in Defenders before we can worry about 300 TDI spares running out. Um, even, even if they run out in the UK, they are scattered all over the world. Thousands of them scattered all over the world. You could make money probably in the future. If they run out in the UK, you could make money from collecting them and shipping them back to the UK and, or to America probably. Because actually that's the thing. This year, 2019, it's the first year that genuine 300 TDI defenders are eligible to go into the US. 25 years rule. So probably the US is going to go crazy in the next few years for 300 TDIs. They're going to hit, uh, there's been con well, possibly even conversions, but now they can get them for real. So it's probably going to spike because they've become really popular in the US, I think. So pro people have probably already started stockpiling 300 TIs to send to the US for spares, perhaps. But certainly there people, you see people selling the vehicles and being like, you know, this is left hand drive, low mileage, 300 TDI from Europe. They're going to hit the market soon. So I'll be interested to see what happens there. That was all of my questions that I was asked. Thank you to those of you that uh, asked the questions. Uh, just going to get into the bonus ones now. I thought I would just throw in a couple of things that you may find interesting. One is I get people, I get, I get a lot of emails or a few, like four or five emails a week from people about, uh, specifically about LR Workshop saying, you know, I like the site and what have you, and giving good feedback. And, and some people say things like, oh, you know, you know, give, give like a thumbs up, give a pat on the back. To your web team and it makes me smile because it's just me i run the servers i run the database i build the business logic i design the website i do absolutely everything on lr workshop um, um, so i'm kind of flattered actually that people think that uh, it would take a lot more than one guy uh, spend i'll probably spend three or four hours a week on lr workshop um, yeah, I'm flattered that people think there's more people behind it than just me, but no, it's just me. As part of the bonus footage, I'm going to take you for a walk around my garage. Seems to be the sort of thing we, you know, we're all interested in this stuff, see what other people's setup is and our hopes and dreams in our workshop or shed or garage or whatever it may be. So I'm just going to walk you around mine and you can see some of the interesting or not interesting junk I've got. And maybe you might be able to point out and say, ah, that, I want, to, I want you to do a video on that. I could, uh, yeah, could do something like that. So here we go. Let's turn the camera around. So here's my garage door. I put this garage door in to get the Defender in the garage because the garage door before ended about here. And um, I had to modify the garage just so I could work on the vehicle on flat ground. There we go. It's my cardboard stash, doors, high lift jack down here. We've got the barbecue because it is the season. There's my bike where I do my exercise. Uh, more cardboard. There's the bulkhead, the lovely bulkhead. Uh, still, I need to get that sorted this summer, hopefully. Uh, there we go. So these are utility springs uh, from a Puma. These were on for about seven years on my vehicle. And uh, I took them off because they were just too damn hard, to be honest. Uh, right, got a bunch of rubbish going on here. Got bits and pieces in it. Let's see what's there. Uh, we've got pants. Bits and pieces. Now this is interesting. I kind of just talk about this briefly. This is a TD5 gauge. This is a fuel gauge that I've completely dismantled. What I've got an idea to do with this, there's little bits in there. What I've got an idea to do with this is build a digital Arduino gauge that takes uh, turbo pressure and oil pressure and oil temperature and basically put it all into a little L and feed it a little LCD screen that goes into um, dashboard gauge like this so it looks completely standard and just modified to put in here like a nice little gauge in here put the bezel back on and stuff i'm all about the factory mods and i think this would be absolutely utterly unreal i think i have the skills to do it i just need to do it one day but that's that was like a preliminary prototype for that oh yeah so update for the um shanna foam i've mostly finished well pretty much finished the top drawer 
I'm quite proud of that, to be honest. Uh, still got a bit of a gap here for something, but uh, got the second drawer to do, which is <laughs> an utter mess. But I could do a video on this if people wanted to, talking about this toolbox. What we got down here? So that's a vice. That's my vice. This thing is rubbish. I only use it for putting universal joints. This is a transfer box. This is a 1.4 transfer box that I took off my Defender uh, when I put my 1.2 transfer box on. And I've been tripping over this for about eight years. Down here we've got junk, junk, junk. Some radius arms there, new takeoff ones. Um, oh, what's this down here? Genuine prop shaft. That was a steal. That was an absolute bargain, that one. Uh, quick kind of tools to go on up here. This has been great actually, putting a tool board up with spanners and screwdrivers. It's just really handy. Um, don't worry about the stickers. Oh, down here, so here, and at the back there, this is one and two ARB locking differentials built into differentials. Now I know my video, I say, uh, you know, my, my latest video, I talk about, don't want to modify stuff, so why have I got these? Well, I could talk about that in a separate video. Um, I don't know what to do with them yet. I just have them. Oh, oil safe pump. I really want to do a video about these. These aren't cheap. I've finally bit the bullet because my philosophy is that if you make maintenance easy to do, you're more likely to do it. Therefore, you have a more reliable vehicle. And uh, part of that is changing the oils, topping up the oils. And um, I've just, just, I just find changing the oils more hassle than it needs to be. So I've gone for one of these pumps and I want to do a review on it at some point in the future. All the consumables up here, all the stuff you'll ever get through. Stuff like this, you see how much dust is on stuff like this. I don't bother with like rust remedies and stuff like this anymore. I don't believe that you can fix rust anymore. I've tried it. I've tried lots of stuff and it just doesn't work. So I think rust, you can only ever cut it out or replace the part, to be honest. More storage, bits and pieces. This is all electrical stuff. This changed my life. Nuts, all categorized together. What I would find is you just, you know, you, you, you do a job and then you're like, oh, that nut's rusted, I'll probably replace it. But then you don't know what you've got in stock. So when you're doing the ordering the parts, you just buy more nuts anyway. And you just end up with loads of nuts and you never know what you've got. It's just a complete waste of time. So I thought once and for all, I paid three quid for this box, categorize them all, Pew! got the part numbers. I know exactly what I've got. It's awesome. It's changed my life. Brilliant. And I've got the same there with them. Um, with the rivets and bolts and things like that. And that's actually been really handy. As we've got soldering, more parts down there. Hmm, what's this? What's this, I wonder? This is a future project I wanna do. This is a Puma secondary seat. This is the 40% seat. I've actually got the other 60, um, but that's not at this location. I wanna fit these Puma secondary seats into my Defender, my 300 TDI. And I wanna do it properly. I want to do it with factory parts. I've got most of the factory parts. Oh, I've just got to do it now. If we look up in the roof, see beyond the lights there. Up there, that's the cross member, the Puma cross member, that's from YRM. Lovely galvanized part, that is. Um, that's essentially what that's for. Old springs, old junk, hubs. That I found, this is a really good way of hanging up the oil collection pan. There's not really any other place to put it, really. Moving across the shelving, I keep all my oils and stuff up the top there. I buy blue roll in bulk because you just get through it. And this is mostly parts in here. This is, a, well, this is an old alternator. I need to recondition this at some point. Just lots and lots and lots and lots of parts. All Puma doors down there. Overalls. This is all like padding and storage and stuff. So when I sell stuff online, I've got packaging for it to go in. Oh, and this lovely stack here, this lovely stack. These are boost alloys with uh, Goodyear Wrangler mud terrain tires on them. And they have been in storage, they are in storage and I'm keeping them for my other Defender at some point, but they're all pretty much brand new condition. And I think I want to get one of these out because my boost and steel wheel video is done so well. I think I want to get one of these out and, um, and weigh it and then we'll see how much these tyres weigh compared to the uh, the Continental Cross Contact and the BF Goodrich. Oh, there's the old window I took off. 
need to know what to do with that aircon already talked about that and uh, up in the roof there's just as much again really up in the roof tons of stuff up there um but i won't go up there and talk about that i know some people will give me suggestions for videos and that's great and i say i'll look into stuff and i kind of always do it um because it depends on a lot of other things and resources and whatever so if i'm going to do it it's going to take like several months so don't be uh don't be ashamed if you ask me. You told me about an idea a couple of weeks ago and I haven't got around to it yet because you know, things don't move that quickly when you've got a full-time job and a family. <laughs> I hope that video was somewhat interesting to you. Thanks for all the questions that everyone has sent in. Hoping to produce another video for your viewing pleasure in the not too distant future. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.